What a lovely day at the beach. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. I couldn't think of a more wonderful place to spend an island vacation. There was this, what's what's that rumbling noise? Ah, oh, crap. That explains why the tickets were so cheap. Should have checked the Yelp reviews. Hello, I am Bentham and welcome to Vulcanoise. This is an indie game that's just arrived in early access uh, on Steam uh, in uh, in recent days, made by a developer called Vulcanoid. So I'm pretty sure I'm just I'm going to take a, a wild stab in the dark and say that this is the first game. Um, <laughs> but that's that's pretty standard for for uh, what we look at. Uh, but I was um, I was directed to this by Peachy Pixel Eight, who thought it would be something right up my alley. I've had a, a bit of a play of it. Okay, I've had a lot of a play of it, and um, it does seem uh, pretty fun. Uh, we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to tell you what I like and don't like about it, because it is a bit of a, a mixed thing. It's one of the standard things that you get with early access games, where um, it's pretty good, there's a lot of promise, but it's not quite there yet, and if if it was just released as a game right now with no future plans for development, um, I'd be a bit underwhelmed. But I am fairly excited about where it's going to go uh, once they add in some of the, the fillier little features, but the baseline, what they have, is really cool. Um, so you'll see there's quite a cool thing happening in the back background of the screen, and basically this uh, this whole thing is why I bothered to look into the game. I'm like, there's giant drilling machines that drive around, and then they deploy factories. This is everything I love. So, it's, it's the basic premise of the game right there. Um, also, as the name may suggest, uh, it's to do with volcanoes. Um, basically, you use the drill ships to survive volcanoes. Um, or, well, the one, or maybe there's more than one, kind of, it's, volcanoes are weird and strange and scary things, uh, really, but we'll, let's get into the game and, and start uh, having a play around and we'll show you how the, the mechanics of it actually work, uh, and so we'll have our little lovely narrated intro scene. Madrenos used to be a wondrous place, a rich and prosperous island, home to a busy trading port, but that was not meant to last. It began when strange formations like giant soil tracks started to appear across the island. No one was able to explain how they were made. Soon after the formations appeared, earthquakes followed. Weak at first, they grew more frequent and more violent. A few days later, three volcanoes erupted in the island lagoon, hurling stones, sinking ships, crushing buildings. Captains feared for the safety of their vessels. All trade stopped. People left Adranos aboard fleeing ships. The brave few who had remained soon regretted their decision. An enormous volcano that lay dormant for centuries erupted, flooding the island with a pyroclastic wave, covering it with lava and hurling stones miles away. Those who had made it to the ships were evacuated, myself among them. What we left behind was an apocalyptic landscape of fire and dust. Periodic eruptions turned our beautiful home into a hellish nightmare, disrupting both naval and aerial traffic for years. Despite their best efforts, not even the best imperial geologists were able to explain the volcano's sudden appearance. Several years later, Exiles from Adranos secured funding for an expedition to return to the island and discover what happened. It was my honor to serve as the captain of the Archimedes submarine. As we surfaced a safe distance from Adranos' shore, we knew that this expedition to reclaim our homeland had only just begun. That is how that works. When you arrive, the expedition begins. That's the order. That's how it... Anyway, I like the part where they're like, we have no idea where this volcano came from, on this island that is a volcano that we built our city on, because it's a volcano and that's good for farms and stuff. It, it was obviously there the whole time, and volcanoes sometimes do actually just do that. It, maybe it just did that. Maybe that's the whole thing? Maybe it just did that. Plot solved. Sorted. Stop living there. It's a volcano. It's a bad idea. 
But yes, welcome, welcome to the game. Uh, we have our captain over there, uh, and we're in a submarine, which is very, very steampunk, uh, with an emphasis on copper. That seems to be like the the aesthetic they're going for. Is everything is copper, and it it's pretty cool. I do like it. Um, but there's our captain, looking very stoic and and concentrating and and captain like, and also like I'm not here. He doesn't seem to notice I'm here. Yeah, he's just, he's hes in a world of his own. Uh, but we talk to him and he tells us what to do while helping us not at all uh, directly, just by giving his instructions. Let's see what he has to say. Um, we have to craft a drill ship core. Good day, sailor. Before we can continue with the expedition, you have to construct a device. Follow the given objectives and you'll soon be piloting your own drill ship. Main quest objective, get ship core upgrade to player inventory. I will accept the quest and uh, that gives me uh, a, a big old quest chain to follow uh, that'll take me uh, to the various things I need to get my, my drill ship so that I can I can get into the, the meat of the game. You may notice it's dead silent in here. Maybe this submarine has very good sound dampening. I'm going to guess they haven't got round to making this make noise yet. And also there's no game music yet apart from on the title screen, I think. I might just add music in because otherwise there there's times when it's really quiet. But if we leave the submarine... You do get some some ambient sounds going on, so it's a little bit less creepy. But here's our here's our submarine. It's very cool. Follows the same basic mechanics as the drill ship. It's basically just a starting thing that you get, so that you can uh, you can do some manufacturing stuff before you actually get the ship. It's all in first person and uh, has some pretty standard stuff. It's sprinting and and health bars and stamina bars and stuff like that. It's a Unity game, by the way, so you'll see probably some some hallmarks of of uh, Unity stuff. That itself is not a bad thing, by the way, if, if you were thinking that. Uh, it's a good way to, to get started with your game, and plenty of awesome games have been made in Unity. All you need is for the devs to actually care, basically. <laughs> and and those who don't will make uh, crap things out of Unity, and it's always sad. But we got to go mine some stuff. we got a couple of basic tools and things, including a gun. There is some combat stuff. In this game, we've got to gather some materials, and uh, once we have enough, it's going to take us back to the submarine so we can do uh, a bit of the crafting side of things and the managing of uh, of machinery and factory components. Also, you notice at the top, we have a volcano eruption timer, because every roughly 18 minutes, uh, that big old volcano over there goes off and uh, destroys the landscape, and you'd better hope you're not in the landscape when that happens gonna grab some extra materials just because otherwise it'll probably send me back out here later to uh, to grab some more stuff. Yeah, it'll probably take uh, uh, an eruption or two to get through the, the core tutorial stuff, uh, but there is a weird thing about the tutorial in that it just it just kind of keeps going. Oh, there's some uh, there's some friends there. We'll meet them later, but we'll uh, keep our distance for now. Uh, but yeah, the tutorial just kind of never stops and it's it's weird because I, I I meant to play like 20 minutes of this game and I think I think I played 10 hours so <laughs> so in the process what I found is that you get through the tut well you go through the tutorial and then you keep going and then you keep going and you're like oh I'm I think I'm just I think I'm just in the game I think this is just I think this is just how it works that was my my weird experience initially of just slowly realizing oh Oh, the whole game just... the, the captain carries on giving you missions, and that's how it works. Because I was kind of expecting at some point to be like, Okay, just go nuts, have have fun, do the thing. But uh, you carry on following the quest chain. Uh, but the thing is, you don't need to. That's what I discovered is like, I can, at a certain point, just ignore what he's telling me, and do things in whatever order I like. So uh, we'll do that eventually, but for now we have to do... Uh, some stuff we don't actually need to speak to him. We need to go over here and deploy the storage module. So there's, a, there's some mechanics here for deploying them like the, the various modules and controlling them all the different panels on the walls here are different machines and, and components and stuff like that the thing is though that the submarine doesn't teach you well how it works and so i was a little bit confused at first it actually makes a lot more sense when you get to the drill ship because the drill ship has an actual proper exterior whereas this one has a, a not real one so pressing buttons in here makes things happen outside but not when you're in the sub because it's a sub and you can't have things deploy out the side of a submarine. That seems unsafe and a bad idea. So you've got to activate your modules. Basically, is, is this is one of the mechanics. The thing is, I I might as well 
just switch all the things on. I don't think, knowing now how the game works, that there's any reason I shouldn't just have all the things on already. Ooh, what's in here? Oh, just a random, completely empty room. Okay. Sure. See, I've just switched all the things on. And the tutorial, I think, is fine with that, because it, like, tells you to turn things on, but if you have already done that, then it skips that step, which is lovely. I love tutorials that do that, where they're like, oh, you've done this already, okay, moving straight on. I hate it when tutorials and, and other things like that have these prerequisites where it's like, you got to switch on this, then do this. and then But then you switch on the thing before it tells you to, and it's like, you still got to switch it on. I'm like, it's on! you got to switch it off and on to make it go, oh, you've switched it on, now on to the next part. This game doesn't do that, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, we've switched this machine on, now we've basically just got to dump all the stuff in here. Oh, that's the wrong button. I was using Factorio hotkeys. Of course I was. <laughs> so I was putting one at a time instead of all the stacks. Uh, press the L key. Quest window contains all active quests. You can decide to abandon a quest, hide a quest, so on. Let me press this. So yeah, that brings us up with this thing. It's not really important. And there we go. And now it's telling us deploy the modules. Already done. Uh, what have we missed? Deploy power module? Oh yeah, that's in the ceiling somewhere. Uh, there it is. Forgot about that one. Doop. There we go. Everything is active now. We have power and smelting and production and all that good stuff. Uh, so now we've got to refine copper. So uh, now we get to the, the way that the, the different uh, modules and stations interact. So you, you need a module and a station to do a lot of functions. This is another thing I got confused by initially, but I understand it now, is that this here is the production module. This is the production station. So the module does the thing. The station is used to co control the thing. And there are benefits to having multiple modules and multiple stations and it all makes sense. Sometimes you don't have a station, like the storage is just a storage, you just click on it to access it. And also, there's a network of all storages on your uh, your submarine slash drill ship, so you can uh, just get anything from anywhere, which is nice. And then over here we have a smelter module and a smelting, uh, refi well, sorry, a refinery module and a refinery station. Uh, and that's how that works. Also, with a random gubbins in here, like a work table for like a crappy version of uh, production that works. It's almost time. Uh, the, the work table is is an offline version of the the production. Basically, you can just like throw together uh, stuff slowly, but uh, without using power. Uh, and then up here we have the power production, uh, which you can mount to the ceiling, which is convenient, and uh, generates power. Funnily enough, that's that's how that works. And here's a periscope. We can have a look at the the view of the volcano as it continues to to threaten our lives. And, uh, yeah, we'll get to doing what it's telling us to do. So we need to use the station to control the module. That's the thing. And then we're just going to tell it to indefinitely smelt copper, because that's easier than hammering the button 16 times. Two minutes till the eruption. Okay, now we're on to uh, the different crafting stuff we need to do. So you go to the production station, there's a bunch of different tabs for different kinds of things. Right now it wants us to make some components. So one, two, three of those, and then one, two, three, four, five, six of these. An annoying thing about this at the moment is that you can't queue up requests. So if I have, if I stack up six of these and then halfway through I click on tubes, it'll cancel making the plates and start making the tubes. That's dumb and annoying, but you can mitigate it by having multiple production stations and just putting a command into each one, which I think is what they were going for. I, I get what they were trying to do, I still find it a little bit irritating that you have to... Like, if you've just got the one station, you got to sit and wait before you put in the next order, rather than just being like, three of those, three of those, six of those, and walk away and come back in a minute when it's done. Okay, now we've got a new quest, which is wait till the eruption's over, because that is, of course, happening. Uh, we've got one minute to go, so I don't know if it matters, but I'm going to seal the doors. Because, uh, let's not be anywhere near that when it happens. Uh, also, a uh, fun uh, thing I discovered is if you shut the door, um, you get an achievement for giving the captain his privacy or something like that. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. That was quite fun. Um, okay. So, now we've got some fiddly stuff to do. It basically wants us to make a couple of different supplies uh, so that we can set up our drill ship, which we'll claim shortly after this eruption is over. Let me see if I can just get something uh, running before... That happens. We got 25 seconds. I'm just going to quickly... Uh, what does it want next? It wants that one. And I'm going to leave this. I'm going to switch to the periscope. Let's have a look outside 
while the eruption goes off, and you can see just exactly what happens to the island when everything explodes. Eight seconds to go. Making more and more noise. There are actually other uh, sections of the volcano, that, not that you can see them, and... There it goes. And it will cover the whole island. There's slight issues with, with loading distance because we're at the very edge of the island here. But here comes the cloud. And now everything is ash and death. And, uh... It'll slowly clear away again. And now everything's a little bit of a barren wasteland. Everything's covered in ash. It's, uh, it's snowing ash, or raining ash, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and everything's pretty miserable, you can see it. The, the volcano in the distance there, having a having a complain, and uh, the timer begins again for 18 minutes. 18 minutes till the next eruption, and in a minute we'll go out there. Um, apparently, it's safe to go out there. I, I wouldn't advise it myself. Seems like a bad idea to breathe that, but the game seems to not care. We also want a door module, so let's make that. And then the final thing is the drill ship core. Oh no, there's also the breach replacement. We'll make the drill ship core. Then we're gonna make three. Breach replacements. One, two, three. Okay, you can queue up multiple of one thing, but you can't queue up multiple different things. Uh, everything goes into the storage that's made in the machine, so then I will claim all of this gubbins, and uh, I think I'll also take the copper with me. Oh, I, I, it's it's hard to carry this stuff. It doesn't stack well. I'm going to stick the scrap metal in there. That's not important. I shouldn't really bother grabbing that, because I can't do anything with it yet. Won't take too long to sort that out, though. So yeah, I think we'll we'll just go with that. And we're to speak to the captain. We've got all the supplies. Now we have to claim a drill ship. We've received a distress, distress call of a heavily damaged drill ship that will soon surface close to our location. Use this to your advantage and claim the drill ship by placing the ship core upgrade. Let's go do that. Oh. The machine's running now. Why are we 25% somewhere? These controls are just there for, like, the aesthetic of it in the submarine. In the drill ships, they make sense. But here, the... Yep, yeah, there's the sound of horrible ruined wasteland. Yeah, the drill in the the drill ships all the, that machinery does something. In the submarine, it ain't going anywhere. But uh, that thing was showing that wherever the submarine was trying to go, it was 25% of the way there, which seems like a weird glitch. Yep, yeah, everything is a little bit ruined. There's very short draw distance on a lot of things. I don't know why. It's a little bit weird because I'm sure my PC can handle it. And there's our drill ship. We'll get straight to it. It's a ditty little thing. Oh, look at it. It's tiny. Oh, there's people in it. Okay. Time to say hi to these guys. Oh. There we go. So, yeah, these guys aren't friendly. They try and kill you if you encounter them. Also, you can loot them for random extra stuff. So we got some more copper. And here is the drill ship now without its crew. There's the core. And I need to remember how on earth to do this. I think I did it. I clicked it. And now the drill ship has been claimed. There we go. I use the core to claim the ship. This is now mine. Um, it's it's a bit of a fixer-upper, but I'm sure we can make it work. Um, there's a radio here, so we can then ask the captain for more instructions. Uh, it's been heavily damaged. You can fix it uh, first before using it to its full uh, potential. You can travel and hide underground, but unable to produce anything. Follow the instruction to fix the walls and place all required modules. So... Uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't accept the quest. Okay, accept the quest. What do you want us to do? Quit the repair tool. Boom. Uh, and then fix the, the walls. And yeah, it just wants us to fix all of them, I think. So I'll just uh, use the breach repair kits. Uh, though we still have some breaches left, so we need more, I guess. Uh, we also want to place a door module. Uh, we'll have to place it in one of the fixed walls, so we'll put it here. And there we go. We now have a doorway to get in and out, because previously we just got in via the holes that were made by the eruption. Uh, and then we have to place the production and refinery modules. Uh, I guess we put them in this side. There and there. So you can you can basically scroll through buildable things when you're holding the wrench. And so I just clicked and placed both the things. And these are our modules. So currently because we're deployed, uh, these are deployed. We go underground, these will fold in and not be usable. Uh, for now they are. Uh, we'll need to switch them on. They're already switched on. Excellent. Yep, it's fully operational. It's giving us some stuff about that. Now we need to uh, gather more materials so that we can uh, 
finish fixing this thing up. Now, I'm a bit concerned about going that way, because over there is where more of the robots are. I believe they're known as COGS. I don't know why, it's never mentioned in the game. They just start being called COGS at some point, without explanation. I'm gonna blame early access. <laughs> yeah, we've got our shotgun. It's only got, uh, got two shots before you have to reload it. Yeah, I think we can actually just sneak past these guys. Where's the the copper that was being marked? There was copper being marked. Where did it go? Wait, do I need to... Ah, so I've got to switch to the, the pickaxe and then it tells me. Here we go. Staying nice and far away from the robots. Makes it easier for us. And uh, that wants us to unequip the tools. It, it very much micromanages you early on, and then as time goes on, it gets less and less specific on what you need to do. It's like, okay, just build this thing. Go through the process. But in, early on, it's like, mine exactly 20 of this. Put t two of this in the machine. And so on and so forth. I realize actually I probably could have bypassed all of this if I'd just gone to the storage module over here and been like, hey, have all this copper I found. Uh, it wants us to deploy the power module, I believe. Yep, there it is. Alright, that's deployed out the top. You can't see it, but it has. And uh, that gives us some power to actually run our machines. We have no coal, and I didn't bring any. So I guess I will go grab some from nearby. Derp. I want to try and make sure that this thing is fully ready to go before the next eruption. Because it would be a pain if I have to go back to the... Uh, to the submarine when this is nearly ready. And yeah, the, the mining works in that there's like everything's, they're all like nodes that regenerate ore, so you can always come back to them later on and get more. I don't know how quickly uh, it regenerates. We just have to dump this in the storage and it will go straight to the, uh, the power generation. Then we've already got a production station here we can use to make the components we need. Four of those. Wait till it's done. And four of those. See, so yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but we'll live, and later on we can get multiple stations so we can have multiple things going at once. We need to make four breach replacements. I'm pretty sure we only need two. Oh no, we need two on the roof as well. Yeah, the roof is wrecked. That's important. Uh, okay, those are made. Gotta go grab them from here. And then using the wrench, plonk, plonk, uh, up stairs, plonk, plonk, and the breaches are repaired. Captain says, well done, somehow, even though I'm not on the radio right now. Uh, let's go on the radio uh, before progressing any further. Gather enough coal to fuel the drill ship systems. Power plants use coal, etc. Uh, and yeah, the, the the goal is just to put coal in the power plant. Haven't we already done that? I feel like we've already done that. I think... Uh, oh, but it wants us to build another power plant, so we'll get to that next. And eventually I'll start ignoring what it's got for me, but for now it is useful. Uh, now we have to start, it's not telling us all the prerequisites we need right now, so we're gonna have to work this out. Uh, there's our coal power plant, one copper plate, one copper tube. Pretty simple. I'm in two minds about how this stuff works, because sometimes it seems like there's no point in the prerequisites existing, it's just an extra step. And there's no way to automate it. You can't be like, make me a power plant and everything required to make the power plant. You have to go into components and select the things to make them. And then you're able to make the power plant. Which is annoying. And I feel like they could just make it. I mean, maybe it's the Factorio player in me speaking. Because, of course, that's always how that works. Okay, we'll place the power plant in the ceiling. Oh, it's a good place to put it. Wants us to speak to the captain again. This happens a lot early on. Uh, wants us to make another storage module. I'm all on board for that because storage can be a real pain sometimes in this. Uh, copper plates, copper tubes, and a chest. So we'll make a plate, make a tube, and we will make a chest, but we'll need another copper plate and a copper bolt for that. Eventually what I'll do is I'll just make a bunch of each of these so that I have them on tap and whenever I need them, but early on... Uh, when resources are a little bit shorter. You don't want to just spam making a certain thing and then have nothing left for anything else. So, making a storage. We can run over and grab it as soon as it's made here. And we can stick this up in the ceiling as well. And this will be connected uh, remotely to the storage right here, so we can just access this one, and now it essentially has double capacity. Also, I noticed this is a bit messed up. 
So I might do some repair work of that. Uh, Annette wants us to install a drill ship segment. Uh, so this bit's a little bit uh, fiddlier. First of all, we need to make the thing. Uh, plates, tubes, bolts, one of each. And a lot more stuff comes along later, of course. This is just the, the first tier of uh, resources. It all gets uh, a lot more fancy later on. So we'll see some more of that. It's not all copper all the time. We get some uh, some fancier stuff uh, in different like areas. Like, we've got a map of the of the world here, and there's different regions. Basically, we've got to upgrade our, our drill ship to be able to get to other regions of the map. And there's all sorts of objectives and various things that we need to uh, do along the way as we explore the island. The final goal is to get to the core of the volcano itself, uh, where we will presumably have to uh, disable some interference by the robots. You may notice that in, like, it, it's like, I wonder what could have caused this trouble in the, the th in the, the volcano. Why could it have erupted? And then it brings you to a loading screen that shows a bunch of robots stood around this big assembly firing like a laser into a lava chamber. So you're like, I, I think I know. I think maybe I might have an idea now <laughs> what that's about. So yeah, that's the objective. We've got to get to those and shut them down. We've got to stop the robots in there. Crazy scheme to do something with volcanoes? Who knows what? Uh, but we've made our segment, and uh, now we get to the fancy parts. We've got seven minutes to go before the next eruption, but any, uh, uh, even so, we're going to go underground. So here's our control system uh, with a few different things. We can go to different regions of the map. We can also just go up and down, uh, and we're going to bring the drill ship down. Here we go. So all the modules uh, get... Uh, fold it in, the whole thing folds up, and then off it goes down into the ground. Even a big old pit that magically fills in. Don't pay attention to it. And then once that process is done, here we are underground. And also you can you can switch out of the camera if you don't want to watch the whole animation of it leaving. You can just uh, you can just pop straight out, and the whole thing tilts, which is real weird. Uh, but yes, now we're down here, we're allowed to uh, to put the upgrade in. Did we, yeah, we already picked the thing up. So it's weird how this works. Clearly what like everything else can be installed while you're up on the surface, but the one thing that can't be is the extra segments added to the drill ship, because it's like, we can't animate that. There's no there's no way we can we can make that look normal. So just go underground, have it happen where no one can see it, and then come back up with the extra extra segment on, it'll be fine. So we've got to go to storage, and then there's an upgrades menu where we can add extra things, and we add the extra thing. And then it brings us to this for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why it switched to the third person camera of the ground we are underneath, but it did. I think it was so that I couldn't see in case this was in shot. So now, we got on this little corridor, and we have another section uh, identical to the front one. Uh, and then we can add more and more of those on as we go, though then the next segments we get will be, uh, will be bigger, uh, which is nice. So we don't add lots of tiny ones as it goes on, we start to get uh, larger sections. Uh, so we don't have to go through little corridors to get to every little tiny bit. So, let's go to the surface again. We've still got five minutes before it erupts, it's fine. We can spend a bit of time up on the surface again. And we can take a look at how the drill ship is now that uh, we have the extra segment on it. Because of course the, the inside and the out has changed. So here we are. We've deployed in the same location for now. Uh, later on, we'll start moving around to other places. There we go. We've got a fancy uh, exercise drill ship. And ignore the fact that we made that extra segment with a single copper plate, copper pipe, and copper bolt. Ignore it. I don't know why the game is like that. It's very, very kind on the requirements for various upgrades. Everything is like a few copper at most to make, even though you mine copper like 20 at a time and make vast amounts of it. So we've still got 53 of the copper here. I think we started with like 70. So we're doing pretty well there. Also, I noticed this refinery station needs to be set up looping the production of copper indefinitely. So every time we put some ore in, it'll immediately be refined. So there we go. We can wander outside, do more exploration. I think we've got another mission to do. What have we got now? Uh, once you travel further, there's a higher risk. Cogs will try to destroy your drill ships. Yeah, this is the first time he mentions Cogs with no explanation of what it stands for, or how he knows they exist, or anything. It's just like, there's a risk Cogs will destroy your drill ship. Excuse me? What? Robots? Since when are there robots? Huh? It's a little bit weird. 
Uh, it wants us to make a turret module, which is a very good idea. So I'll probably build one of those. And that will uh, defend us while we're uh, away from the drill ship. But right now we shouldn't get attacked until we get attacked in this region. Because it's the starting area of the game. It'd be a bit mean if the, uh, if the robots attacked you in the starting place. So I think I can just wander off and go about my business mining stuff without having to worry about them trying to blow up the drill ship. Even if, uh, even if they do turn up, the drill ship will set, uh, set off a really loud alarm that I will hear from anywhere on the island. Don't question how that works. Alright, let's say hi to these guys. They don't see me. Now they see me. Oh, I missed him. There we go. And now I've made a bit of noise. They're gonna notice me a bit more. Oh, is that guy coming for me? Nah, he doesn't know I'm here. Okay. Can loot him. Copper bolts. They don't have that much on them, really. But occasionally, something you actually want and is of use to you uh, turns up. Right, we're running out of time. Let's quickly mine this sulfur. I believe this is needed for the turret. You find these around lava, which uh, you also find those guys around. Also, if you get close to this, game really doesn't like it, but also it doesn't hurt. I can just stand here fine, and it's like, yep, searing heat, burning out your eyeballs, but your health doesn't drop, so it's fine. Which is nice. This this guy is surprisingly resistant to heat. It's actually a little bit horrifying, and I don't understand it. He's clearly some sort of superhuman, or he's wearing some sort of steampunk copper suit of armor made of, of dead robots or whatever. Yeah, we'll grab a bunch of this. Uh, but there is an eruption coming. The game, as, as the eruption gets closer, the game like tells you about that in more and more different ways. So at like, the top is like, hide from the eruption. And then later the captain's like, you should hide from the eruption. And then sirens go off like, there's an eruption coming. Why aren't you hiding from it yet? Uh, is that where I'm going? Yeah, that is where I'm going. There's the drill ship hiding behind that tree. We're getting back in plenty of time. It's fine. Uh, it is worth mentioning, the drill ship cannot survive an eruption when it's on the surface, you do have to uh, go underground in order to not get blown up, so bear that in mind when playing for yourself. I learned that lesson the hard way. There we go, that's all that stuff in there. The copper is being immediately smelted, which is nice. We can also set up the smelting of uh, sulfur, which is what we just mined. There we go, that's done, so I'll switch it to looping smelting of that, and we'll probably at some point get a second refinery station so one can work on copper. One can work on sulfur. Though, if they're both running at the same time, then I think they'll both run at half speed because the refinery is, like, already fully busy with one order. If there's two, it'll share its time between the two. Adding more refineries will make the whole thing go faster. And that's the basic idea of how the refineries and how the uh, production machines work, is that the stations control orders and the modules control the speed that they're all fulfilled in. Let's go underground. And I'm going to swap out of this so we can watch the processor inside. In fact, I think I could have just stepped out there and it could have left without me, which would have been interesting. Maybe I'll experiment with that sometime, but here we go! We're tipping over! It's weird and quite cool. It's like when you, uh... It's like standing on a bendy bus. There we go. We're now underground. Easily made it under the ground with uh, plenty of time to spare. Let's look at the periscope. Here we go. And there's the eruption, and that will happen, of course, every 18 minutes continuously uh, for the whole game. And you're going to have to find a way to stop this from happening. And spoilers, it's the cogs that are doing it. Uh, so if you like this, uh, do tell me, and uh, we'll continue with the series and uh, see what we find the further we go uh, around the island and towards the volcano, and the more we explore and deal with the, the cogs and the, the various cool things that you can do with the drill ship. It's definitely got a lot of promise. Uh, it's also got some issues as well, so uh, we'll see how it develops as well over time. Uh, and uh, if I do continue with this, I'll get into to more of the, the goods and the bads, the cools and the less cools. Uh, but I think that's where we're going to leave it today, uh, over this blasted wasteland of ash and death. And so with that, I should say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.